Hi everybody, I'm Jeffrey Allen. I'd like to talk today a little bit about ghosts and past lives and what happens when you die. So, to really understand what happens when you die, I have to start before you were born. Now, as spirits, out of body, we travel from life to life, and we tend to travel with groups of spirits who have similar interests, similar things they're learning, and similar goals. Now, before this lifetime you're in right now, you had a big planning session with all the people that were going to be significant or are significant in your life right now, as well as the spirit guides who are traveling with each of you, helping to coordinate and keep you on path or help line things up according to this plan that you wrote and according to the plan that you're writing as you're alive. Now, keep in mind that even though you have a big planning session, there is kind of a path that you've set yourself forward on. This is written in pencil. You can change things at any time and erase it, write in new things, put new requests in. You are the author of your story, so you can change it at any time. Don't feel like you're stuck or have to live a particular way. Now that being said, some things that are really important to you as a spirit have a lot of energy and a lot of momentum behind them, so it may be easier for you to kind of go with your plan than to try to completely rewrite it. And to do that, you may have to trust that you did a good job writing in the first place and that your perspective before you came into this lifetime was a little bigger than the one you have in this lifetime. Okay, so then you're born. You come into the body and within a few years, you kind of forget about this planning session. You get really excited and engaged in this physical reality because that's how it is. And you want to eat and you want to play and you want to do things with your body and uh, you kind of forget that there ever was another experience. And that's really pretty important because if you didn't forget, you probably wouldn't engage as fully in this lifetime. So I think it's actually a good thing. However, at some point it is nice to kind of wake up and start to remember a little bit about who you are as a spirit so that you can more consciously be on this path moving forward doing the things that you want to do. Okay, now one thing that happened during that planning session is that you chose when you were going to die or the different opportunities at which you might die. So I call these exit doors and I see this all the time in readings and healing sessions of people who have had something very difficult or kind of a near-death experience happen or that they're afraid that they're going to die soon. Now in this planning session before you were born you pick these particular days and say, ah, this, here's some opportunities for me to go. If it's better for me as a spirit to accomplish things I want to accomplish, to stay in the life, I'll just move by those doors and not die. But if it's a good time to exit, I'm going to go through this exit door. From what I've seen, nobody dies at a time other than the exit doors. But you all have many exit doors, so you may pass by a few and then pick one to go out of. Now, when you do finally decide, it's my time, and I go through this exit door, I die, your spirit leaves your body. You tend to spend a few weeks or a few months, it's different for each individual, around the body and kind of near the people that you were close to in this life. And this is the time where people will feel you. If you have loved ones that have died, you know that they kind of hang out for a little while. They may, you may feel like they're talking to you or that you can sense their presence. You may even smell a familiar smell that was with them. And you kind of know that they're there. And at some point you notice that I think they're gone. I think they're, they moved on. They're not here anymore. And that's because it's true. <laughs> the spirits, after you die, hang out a little bit and kind of clean things up and work with your loved ones, finish any energy and after you leave the body, you have a bigger perspective on what's happening from life to life. So you may have a little opportunity to do some cleanup while you're still close to the body because there is a lot that can happen in that space. However, at some point you want to finish your dying process. When you finish your dying process, what'll happen is you'll move through this little, looks like a little doorway up in the ninth level of the astral plane or the dream plane. And it looks like a light that like people describe and people go through this light. And after that, they're pretty hard to get a hold of. I can talk to them uh, some in a psychic reading, for example. I can communicate with those people and talk to them on the other side. But I don't get a lot of details about what their experience is like. 
And eventually they decide to come back into another body and be born. And once they're in a body again, they're really difficult to get a hold of because their attention and energy is engaged in their present life. So I see that sometimes where somebody wants to talk to a deceased loved one, but I can't reach them anymore because I can see uh, they're now a little baby and they're in some new lifetime. Okay. Now that's what goes, if it goes well, it sounds like this. Sometimes people are really stuck when they die and they're stuck on some really painful picture or event or something that happened and it's right in front of them and all they can see is what this, this pain is or this difficulty or whatever. It's right here like a little movie and everywhere they look, it's real, it's real, it's real. They can't see anything else. And that's the experience of being a ghost. Now, being a ghost is kind of lousy. <laughs> I got stuck as a ghost a few lifetimes ago, and so I can tell you from my experience, you don't want to be a ghost. When you die, you want to have a nice, clean transition. You want to clean things up with everybody and then move on, because being a ghost feels pretty bad. In fact, that kind of creepy feeling that you get when ghosts are around is actually the experience they're having. That kind of creepy, scary, weird feeling that you have, that boogeyman feeling, is pretty much the experience they're having all the time because they're just stuck in those uncomfortable pain pictures and they're now, they don't have a body so they can't really do much about it. Now, when I do come across a ghost, it's pretty easy to help them. What I do is I just talk to them about what happened in their lifetime, kind of hear a little bit of their story. And then at some point I just ask them, do you know what year it is? What's the last year you remember? And whatever year it may have been for them, like 1945, I then tell them, did you know it's 2012 now? And they kind of like, uh, and wake up a little bit. They get a little distance from this stuck picture so they can see more perspective. And then I tell them, did you know that you're dead? At that point, they usually get, ah, a big wake-up call. Ah, I'm dead, I understand. And then I point, hey, see that little door there? That's where you're going. You might want to check out these guys, these guides that are waiting for you. At that point, uh, usually they're done. Sometimes it takes more than that, but that's uh, 90% of the time ghosts go very easily. And I've worked with many, many ghosts. It's actually one of my kind of secret goals is to help clear all these ghosts off the planet because it's just not fun being a ghost. And it's really confusing for the people that are experiencing ghosts as well. Okay, so after you move on, eventually you'll come back and have another planning session, another lifetime, and this kind of all starts over and happens again. And what's interesting about this for me is that having this perspective of what happens before and after life makes things a little bit easier. I can be a little bit easier on myself about my life experiences now because I really know that I planned this life. And even though the experiences aren't all pleasant, there's a reason why I planned them. And if I just kind of go with it, trust that it's okay and it's going to work out, it generally does and things get better and better. I also don't have a lot of fear around death anymore because I've seen so many past lives and so many people that have transitioned that I know that it's not like this random scary event where suddenly you're just snuffed out and, and then you're boom, you're gone. No more existence. Uh, it doesn't happen like that. There's actually no evidence to suggest that you die when you die. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that you keep living. And indeed, that's what happens. So. Uh, this has helped me have less fear about what's going to happen when I die. And I hope that you can use this to be a little easier on yourself in this lifetime, uh, because again, you planned it. Uh, you're not going to die on a random day. You're going to go on one of these good days to die that you planned ahead of time. And as you get close to those exit doors, it may be a little bit scary. You may feel like, uh, something might be coming, I'm afraid I'm going to die, or your family might call and they're afraid you're going to die. But as long as you're clear that you want to stay and you're not wanting to die, you'll move past that exit door and move on to the next opportunity. So you don't really need to worry about these exit doors either. It can be a big relief because when you're not worried about death, you can engage more in this life right now and really get into it and have a good time. So I hope that you do that and that you enjoy this year. And if there's anything else that you'd like me to talk about in the future, please put it in the comments below. I'm Jeffrey Allen. Thank you very much.